Hello, welcome to OneSource Building Technologies. Today we'll be guiding you through your employee orientation. Now let's begin. Si hablas español, esta presentación está dispuesta en español en pedirla. El email para abrir esta versión es hsse en osbt.com. OneSource Building Technologies provides value-added voice and data solutions and services to large-scale national and international customers. Our proven processes and procedures provide our customers with a single point of contact to ensure accountability and access to a global service provider network. Our goal is to guarantee IT infrastructure delivered internationally and maintained risk-free, on time, and on budget, and we're glad to have you on our team. HSSE Goals and Objectives To meet our customer requirements, OSBT and our valued partners will cooperate by complying with safety standards as outlined in the following safety procedures. Project coordinators and project managers are the first line of defense and will be responsible for identifying site-specific safety requirements, ensuring technicians complete the appropriate safety forms, and ensuring untrained technicians receive the proper safety training the job site requires. To complete the required safety training, navigate to the OSBT Health, Safety, Security, and Environmental website at www.osbt.com backslash HSSE and create a user account with your OSBT email and a password of your choice. Choose the Training Competency Matrix tab and select your job title from the drop-down menu to determine which standard procedures you are required to complete. Please be aware that there will be a test following each standard procedure training module. Your score will be automatically emailed to the OSBT safety team. You must pass with a score of 70% or greater to be certified in the safety procedure. After successful completion, please download a copy of the safety certificate and retain a copy of the certification for your records. Technicians must take a copy of their safety certification to medium or high-risk job sites. Your project coordinator will inform you which job sites are medium or high risk. For questions on this or any other safety concern, please contact the OSBT safety team at 866-648-3649 or hsse at osbt.com. Now let's become familiar with the HSSE website components. There are five tabs, policy statements, standard operating procedures, training modules, forms, and the competency matrix. Let's begin with tab one. Policy statements is the safety program document that encompasses the organization's safety vision. In the words of our president and CEO, we are committed to providing our employees with a safe and healthy workplace. The personal health and safety of our employees is our primary objective. A successful health and safety program must embody proper attitudes toward the OSBT HSSC program on the part of all employees at all locations. It requires cooperation in all health and safety matters between supervisor and employee, and between each employee and coworkers. Only through cooperative effort can we establish and preserve a health and safety program in the best interest of all. Employees are asked to inform their supervisor or management of any work hazards or unsafe work practices. No employee should feel reprisal for notifying management of any safety hazard. In fact, we encourage all employees to inform us immediately of any hazard, no matter how small it may seem. Every employee, vendor, and partner has the authority and responsibility to stop work for conditions that threaten imminent danger. We will give thorough consideration to all suggestions or recommendations made by employees to improve workplace safety. Similarly, 
we will take disciplinary action against any employee who willfully or repeatedly violates our workplace safety rules. Sincerely, Bruce Davis. The second tab on the HSSE portal are the standard operating procedures. Standard operating procedures are in PDF for your future reference. The next tab you will find the training modules, which are the standard procedures in a user-friendly video form. The fourth is the forms tab, which will provide forms or checklists associated with the standard procedures. Along with appropriate PPE, project coordinator's work orders shall indicate which on-site forms shall be completed and returned to the safety team. For example, JSA, the job safety analysis, identifies job hazards and unsafe conditions that must be completed by the technician on any medium to high risk job site or one that includes working at heights, excavating, trenching, man lifts, forklifts, or any powered industrial truck. The final tab is where you will find the training competency matrix. This drop down menu communicates which SP you are required to complete. We will now begin discussing the OSBT standard operating procedures. OSBT Standard Procedure 911, the Emergency Action Plan. This emergency action plan addresses emergencies that our company expects may occur. Under this plan, our employees will be informed of the plan's purpose, emergency escape procedures, route assignments, procedures to be followed by employees who remain to control before they evacuate, procedures to account for all employees after emergency evacuation has been completed, rescue and medical duties for those employees who perform them, preferred means of reporting fires and other emergencies, types of evacuations to be used in various emergency situations, and the alarm system. Emergency Evacuation Plan For emergency evacuation, floor plans or workplace maps that clearly show the emergency escape routes and rally points located are posted. In the event of a fire emergency or other internal emergency, the procedures are intended to be complementary to any evacuation procedures established by the building manager. Please remember to evacuate to the nearest exit, call 911, Pull the fire alarm on the way out of your building to inform the other tenants. Upon notification of evacuation, all employees must exit the building, check wind direction, and proceed to the nearest designated safe area, at least 100 feet upwind of the hazard. The designated safe area for the Houston office is under the covered parking. Standard Procedure 001 Incident Reporting The health and personal safety of our employees is our primary objective. Employees are asked to inform their supervisor or management of any work hazard or unsafe work practices according to Standard Procedure 001 Incident Reporting. We encourage all employees to inform the call center, their supervisor, or project manager immediately of any hazard without regard to how small it may seem. Standard Procedure 002, Housekeeping Policy. The purpose of this standard operating procedure is to provide a set of guidelines for the employees of OSBT for good housekeeping practices. All personnel will work towards maintaining their respective workplace in a clean and orderly manner. Housekeeping is to be maintained as an integral part of every work operation. Cleaning and removal of waste and dust should be performed regularly. Standard Procedure 003 OSHA Record Keeping This policy is for the safety team. OSHA record keeping helps generate more accurate information about occupational injuries and illnesses. It simplifies the overall record keeping system for employers and it better protects employees privacy.
Standard Procedure 007 Job Safety Analysis This program is designed to provide information on establishing an effective job safety analysis procedure to identify and eliminate hazards. Project coordinators' work orders shall indicate on their work orders when this form should be completed. Provide the tech a copy in the work order attachments and PCs are responsible for returning the JSA completed to the safety team. Technicians shall submit the JSA with their signed work order. The job safety analysis identifies job hazards and unsafe conditions and must be completed by the technician on any medium to high risk job site or one that includes working at heights, excavating, man lifts, forklifts, or and a power industrial truck. The job safety analysis, known as JSA, selects and prioritizes the jobs to be analyzed. It is used to rank each job function by the greatest number of potential hazards. Standard Procedure 008 Visitor Management Policy In order to assure the safety and security of one source employees, visitors, property, and to ensure that only authorized personnel have access to the company facilities, the visitor management policy has been adopted. Employees must help enforce the policy which states all visitors must be accompanied by the employee or employees that they are visiting for the duration of their stay. Standard Procedure 009 Safety Agreement Policy This procedure establishes a method for notifying partners and other technicians of the HSSE procedures that are required in order to be issued a work order to perform work or conduct business for one source building technologies. Specifically, this procedure provides for an exchange of information on incident reporting, emergency evacuation, job safety analysis, PPE, exit interview, the use of equipment, as well as other safety and environmental related issues. Standard Procedure 011 Fire Prevention Plan The purpose of this fire prevention plan is to eliminate the cause of fire, prevent loss of life, property damage, and to comply with the Occupational Safety and Health Administration's standard on fire prevention. It provides employees with information and guidelines that will assist them in recognizing, reporting, and controlling fire hazards. Fire Prevention Inspection Checklist The OSBT Safety Manager will ensure that equipment is maintained according to manufacturer's specifications. OSBT will also comply with the requirements of the National Fire Protection Association's codes for specific equipment. Standard Procedure 013 Electrical Safety Procedure The Electrical Safety Program is designed to prevent electrical injuries and property damage. This program also provides for proper training to ensure employees have the requisite knowledge and understanding of electrical work practices and procedures. Only employees qualified in this program may conduct adjustment, repair, or replacement of electrical components or equipment. Electricity has long been recognized as a serious workplace hazard, exposing employees to such dangers as electrocution, fires, and explosions. Standard Procedure 014 Cell Phone Policy 
This policy sets forth OSBT's rules about cell phone usage and applies to all company employees and partners while on site. For purposes of this policy, the term cell phone is defined as any handheld electronic device with the ability to receive and or transmit voice, text, or data messages without a cable connection, including, but not limited to, cellular telephones, digital wireless phones, radio phones, walkie-talkies, telephone pagers, and personal digital assistants. Standard Procedure 015 Exit Interview Safety Program To identify hazards, access, control, and mitigate risk, the exit interview shall be conducted by the OSBT call center at each text daily checkout interview. Standard Procedure 016 Office Safety Procedures This procedure works to eliminate potential office hazards within our facility. This standard operating procedure is intended to address the issue of evaluating and identifying potential office hazards, providing written procedures, communicating information concerning hazards, and mitigating factors adversely affecting office safety. Office safety inspections will enable each employee to recognize hazards related to office ergonomics and to use proper procedures to minimize these hazards. The following checklists will be documented. Fire prevention measures, electrical hazards, exit aisles and floors, office equipments and stairways, halls and ramps. Standard Procedure 018, Return to Work. The Return to Work program at OSBT provides instructions to return to work following absence due to injury or illness. Also referred to as ERTW or Early Return to Work, informs an employee or partner who is unable to return to his or her regular work assignment until he or she is fully recovered. Standard Procedure 019, Ladder Safety Program. Ladders present unique opportunities for unsafe acts and unsafe conditions. Employees who use ladders must be trained in proper selection, inspection, and use and storage. Improper use of ladders has caused a large percentage of accidents in the workplace. Use caution on ladders. The Ladder Inspection Checklist Ladder inspections must be completed before each use. Conduct an inspection checklist while checking out the ladder from the storage. It asks questions such as, any rungs or steps missing? Any cracked, split, or broken uprights? Any loose nails, screws, bolts, or other materials? Is it free from grease, oil, or slippery material? When was your last ladder safety training? Standard Procedure 021, Hand and Power Tools. OSBT shall ensure that all hand tools are used properly, safely, and in accordance with manufacturer's guidelines. These are a few of the general precautions that shall be observed when using power tools. Never carry a tool by the cord or hose. Never remove prongs from any cords. Never yank the cord or the hose to disconnect it from the receptacle. Keep cords and hoses away from the heat, oil, 
and sharp objects. Replace all frayed and or damaged extension cords. Do not try to tape cords. Disconnect tools when not in use, before servicing, and when changing accessories such as blades, bits, and cutters. A JSA will be necessary when working with hands and power tools. Standard Procedure 022 Vehicle Safety Program The main purpose of this vehicle safety standard operating procedure is defensive driving techniques so that you can be safe behind the wheel and avoid accidents. Assigned operators will be able to identify driving hazards, understand defensive driving techniques, and use these techniques to prevent accidents and injuries on the road. As an authorized driver of a company vehicle, you have been given certain privileges, you assume the duty and obey all motor vehicle laws, maintain the vehicle properly at all times, and follow the policies and procedures outlined in the standard operating procedure. Company Vehicle Acceptance Form When driving a company vehicle, you are responsible for operating the vehicle in a safe manner. The Vehicle Acceptance Form confirms you agree to operate the vehicle in a safe manner and are allowing OSBT to obtain a Motor Vehicle Record Report. Standard Procedure 023 Workplace Violence The purpose of our Workplace Violence Prevention Program is to prevent acts of violence against our employees. To ensure orderly operations and provide the best possible work environment, One Source Building Technologies expects employees to follow rules of conduct that will protect the interests and safety of all the employees and the organization. It is one source building technology's desire to provide a drug-free, healthful, and safe workplace. To promote this goal, employees are required to report to work in appropriate mental and physical condition to perform their jobs in a safe and satisfactory manner. Standard Procedure 026 Fall Protection The purpose of this fall protection program is to establish guidelines to protect all employees engaged in outdoor or indoor work activities that expose them to potential falls from elevation. It is specific in identifying the types of fall protection systems. A JSA will be necessary when working at an elevation above 6 feet. Fall Protection Inspection Checklist is conducted before each use of a full body harness, lanyard, self-retracting lanyard, and snap hook. This inspection will ensure that all of OSBT equipment is in good working condition. Standard Procedure 028 Powered Industrial Truck This program has been developed to reduce the risk of physical injury or property damage in areas where powered industrial trucks are in operation. It also brings OSBT into compliance with federal, state, and local law. There are two forms which accompany this procedure, the Forklift Operator Evaluation Form and the Powered Industrial Truck Inspection Checklist. A JSA will be necessary when working with a forklift or any powered industrial truck. Forklift Operator Evaluation Form During operational training, 
trainees must operate a powered industrial truck only under the direct supervision of authorized trainer. Trainers will follow the forklift operator evaluation checklist and rate the operator before an operator is permitted to use a powered industrial truck. Powered Industrial Truck Inspection Checklist Prior to the operation of any powered industrial truck, the pre-use inspection checklist must be completed. This applies at the beginning of every job that requires a powered industrial truck and or when a new equipment operator takes control. Standard Procedure 030 Man Lifts Procedure This procedure establishes the requirements for safely operating man lifts at OSBT. Many factors affect the operational safety including proper design, installation, and maintenance of equipment. It must be emphasized, however, that the most significant factor for safe operation is the ability of the individual employee to properly comply with the established operating procedure for man lift use. A JSA will be required when working with man lifts. Standard Procedure 031 Management of Change Management of Change, or MOC, is the best practice used to ensure the safety, health, and environmental risk that are controlled when a company makes changes in their facilities, documentation, personnel, or operations. This procedure is specifically for the use of the safety team and senior management. Standard Procedure 032 Employee Suggestion Policy The Employee Suggestion Program is designed to promote the communication of ideas, enabling both the company and its employees to benefit from increased revenues, lower costs, greater productivity, and safer working conditions. This program ensures objective consideration of all ideas, guidelines, for recognition are described in this document. An employee suggestion form empowers employees who actively submit improvement suggestions and give an organization a competitive advantage in generating cost savings, improving production, and increasing efficiencies. Standard Procedure 034, Fire Extinguisher Policy. Portable fire extinguishers are intended as a first-line defense to cope with fires of limited size. This policy will establish procedures to supplement fire extinguisher requirements and help assure fire safety at OSBT. Standard Procedure 035, Fit for Duty. This policy covers only those situations in which an employee is having observable difficulty performing his or her work duties in a manner that is safe for the employees and or for his or her coworkers, or is posing an imminent and serious safety threat to self or others. This policy prescribes the circumstances under which an employee may be referred for a fitness for duty observation. The purpose of this fitness for duty policy are to help assure the safety and health of individuals or others with whom they have contact, 
to establish procedures by which OSBT can evaluate an employee's ability to safely and competently perform his or her work duties when a health or safety problem arises. Fit for duty form. An employee is expected to perform essential job functions in a safe and effective manner and to discuss with his or her supervisor any circumstances that may impact his or her ability to do so. Employee fit for duty observation report form is presented with circumstances or knowledge that indicates that an employee may not be fit for duty. Standard Procedure 036 Confined Space Entry The purpose of this program is to protect employees from the hazards of entry into permit-required confined spaces and to ensure the safety of the employees working around permit-required confined spaces. A JSA will also be necessary when working in confined spaces. Confined Space Identification and Classification Form The OSBT Confined Space Identification and Classification Form is a checklist that will help you identify potential hazards. This form will help employees classify a non-permit confined space versus a permit confined space. Standard Procedure 037 Excavating, Trenching, and Shoring Excavating and trenching operations shall be performed in a manner that will protect personnel from the dangers associated with trenching and excavating, such as cave-ins, and will prevent damage to underground utilities. A JSA will be required for high-risk work such as excavating, trenching, and shoring. Standard Procedure 038 Hot Work Permit The purpose of this document is to outline minimum procedures, training, equipment, and work practices that if followed will help prevent accidents to OSBT employees, partners, and property. Any employee performing hot work shall wear appropriate PPE and complete a JSA. Hot Work Permit Checklist Before conducting hot work, employees will inspect the hot work area, which includes identifying potential hazards and control those hazards. During this inspection, you will inspect for general confined spaces and compressed gas cylinders. Standard Procedure 039 People Transport The purpose of this program is to establish policies and procedures to help ensure that drivers operate vehicles safely to reduce the potential for accidents which can result in injuries and property damage. Employees who drive personal vehicles on company business are expected to meet the requirements outlined in the policy. Standard Procedure 040 Lockout Tagout This lockout tagout program covers the servicing and maintenance of machines and equipment in which an unexpected startup of the machines or equipment or release of stored energy could cause injury to employees. Lockout tag out inspection form. The procedural steps for shutting down and securing machines or equipment 
must be followed by this equipment specific procedure form. This form allows the employee to identify which energy source is present and list the steps in order necessary to shut down and de-energize the equipment. When locking out, tagging out a device, employees should follow the lockout, tagout inspection form. The equipment inspector will review the current lockout, tagout procedure and indicate whether the lockout, tagout procedures are necessary. Standard Procedure 100 Hazard Communication Program To prevent exposure resulting in injury and or illness and to comply with all applicable state health and safety rules, including the change to the globally harmonized system of classification and labeling of chemicals, we ask our affected employees to be familiar with and follow proper hazard communications. To make sure that all affected employees know about information concerning the dangers of all hazardous chemicals used, the Hazards Communication Program has been established. Standard Procedure 240 Safe Handling of Bloodborne Pathogens. The purpose of this procedure is to comply with OSHA standards for exposure to bloodborne pathogens. The Exposure Control Plan applies to all employees who handle, store, use, process, or dispose of potentially infected blood and could be exposed to blood or other potentially infectious material. Standard Procedure 300 Eye Protection Policy To be in compliance with federal and state regulations, employers must ensure that each affected employee uses appropriate eye or face protection when exposed to eye or face hazards from flying particles, molten metal, liquid chemicals, acids or caustic liquids, chemical gases or vapors, or potentially injurious light radiation. Standard Procedure 301 Safety Shoe Policy To establish the process of assessing foot hazards, to determine the appropriate foot PPE, and to permit employees to select and obtain the proper foot protection for hazards identified in the assessment so as to eliminate or reduce the severity of workplace foot injuries as required by OSHA rules. Standard Procedure 302 Head Protection Policy The purpose of this head protection policy is to minimize the frequency and severity of potential head injuries incurred by employees by establishing a policy for wearing hard hats. In addition, this section will define the type and required use of minimum head protection. Standard Procedure 311 Personal Protective Equipment Personal protective equipment may include items such as gloves, safety glasses, shoes, earplugs, muffs, hard hats, respirators, coveralls, vests, and full body suits. Project coordinators shall indicate in the safety section of their work orders which PPE the technician is required to wear and to ensure our technician are protected in the field. Personal protective equipment, commonly referred to as PPE, is equipment to be worn to minimize exposure to serious workplace injuries and illnesses. These injuries and illnesses may result from contact with chemical, radiological, physical, electrical, 
mechanical, or other workplace hazards. This program addresses the hazards present, selecting the proper personal protective equipment, maintenance of personal protective equipment, use of personal protective equipment, and employee training. Training Competency Matrix. You may not need to take all the training courses we just covered. In order to figure out which ones you do need to take, head over to osbt.com. From there, log in with the account that's specific to you by clicking on the HSSE tab. Then click the Training Competency on the drop-down shown above. Select your job title in order to see which trainings you will be required to complete. How to view the training. Once you have figured out which training modules you will need to complete, you can now locate the training modules required for your specific job function. Again, on the osbt.com backslash hsse, click on the hsse dropdown and select the training modules option. This will lead you to a new page that will have the trainings by name and allow you to access the ones you will need. View the videos and take the quizzes in order to demonstrate your knowledge retained after each training module. There will be quizzes. Simply follow the hyperlink given after the training module and take the quiz over the material you just reviewed. Please remember these quizzes will be graded and your score will count, so please retain a copy on file of your certificate of completion. Good luck and be safe. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact HSSE at OSBT.com. Please copy-paste the link below into your browser to acknowledge you have successfully completed the orientation. Thank you, and welcome to OSBT.